In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to push your local Git repository to GitHub, as well as teach you other commands like pull, clone, and remote. I'm going to assume that you already have a Git repository to work with. If not, watch the previous video in this series. Otherwise, let's get right on into it. All right. Um, just to review, we have this Git repository right here. There's no changes to be committed, and it has two commits in its commit history. What we want to do is take this repository, which is in this root folder, just two files, and push it up to GitHub. So how do we do that? Well, I have my GitHub account. Uh, I'm also going to assume that you have a GitHub account. And to add this to GitHub, let's create a repository on GitHub. So let's do this plus sign, new repository, and then I'm going to call this uh, just git 101. Okay. And this is just a basic git demo okay and don't add any of these changes don't check any boxes or anything you can keep it public um, and then create that repository okay so this repository has been created it's called git 101 and it's associated with my github account and this is a bit overwhelming um, github is just trying to help you but uh, I think it's a little confusing especially for first first timers um, what we want to do is basically tell our local Git repository, we want to point our local Git repository at this GitHub uh, URL right here. And actually, um, it's I don't know why they don't say it here, but HTTPS uh, for creating a repository is actually deprecated, I think, as of, I don't know, 2021. I didn't write it down here. Um, but anyway, uh, we want to use the SSH URL, which is this one, git at github.com, and then your username and then the name of the Git repository. So basically, we kind of did all of this other stuff in the previous video. All we really have to do is uh, git remote add origin and then the URL to the GitHub repo. So let's go ahead and copy that. And then back here and within our Git repository, we'll do git remote add origin and then the URL. So basically what that does, if you now type git remote, um, well, it's the name of our remote is called origin, but if you do git, git remote dash V, you can see that, um, when we push and pull changes, uh, this is the URL that's going to be used. So what if we want to try to push that right now? Let's do git push origin. Uh, and I think the name was main. Yep. Git push dash U origin main. Let's make sure that branch name matches up with our branch name locally, which here it is main. So we'll git push dash u origin main. And that fails with the infamous permission denied, could not read from a remote repository. Now, the reason for this is because you need to associate your computer's SSH key with your GitHub account. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's uh, fairly straightforward um, if you know what you're doing, but let me, uh, let's go through the steps. So basically you have to add an SSH key. So you can do that with a SSH key gen command. So SSH key gen, and we're going to do a uh, type RSA and then dash B 4096 and then dash capital C in the name of your, or I guess your email address. So Tony teaches tech at gmail.com. Now, um, it's going to generate a public private key pair in your SSH directory called IDRSA. Whoops. So that's fine. Keep the default hit enter. Uh, you don't have to add a passphrase. So hit enter and again, and that has been created. So if we go look inside of the SSH directory, we're going to see two files, IDRSA without an extension, an idrsa.pub. Now this .pub file is what we want to tell GitHub, okay? So let's look at the contents of that. I'm just going to say cat and then this file, or you can open it with a text editor. And that's what this looks like. So basically we're going to take everything from here all the way down to the end of your email and put that into GitHub. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to open up GitHub again, go up here to the upper right hand corner, settings, and then come down to SSH and GP, GPG keys. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and then we're going to add a new SSH key. 
and I'm going to call this MacBook Pro. It's an authentication key and then paste that in. So I'm going to add that in. And now we have that associated with our GitHub account. So we can basically try the same exact command that we did before the git push dash u origin main. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and there you go. This time it worked. It says that um, our branch main is set up to track origin main. That means they're pointed at each other and all of our changes were pushed up to GitHub. So let's confirm that. Let's go open up our page here, our GitHub page, go into your account, and then we see our repository, Git 101, and we should be able to see those two files, Apple and Orange. Um, and you can see the same two commits that we have locally. Those, uh, the first one, uh, here when we added the file about oranges and then the second one where we added updated orange and added apple. So anyway, um, the whole point of GitHub is, well, one of the major reasons people use GitHub is for collaboration. So let's kind of simulate somebody uh, contributing to this repository and then I'm going to show you how to pull those changes back down onto your local um, account or your local computer. So I'm going to add a file directly through GitHub. I'm just going to create a new file here which is a very valid thing to do. And I'm going to call it uh, banana.py. And I'm just going to write some simple Python code again. Uh, print I eat, um, let's, use, let's use an emoji. I eat banana. <laughs> okay. Um, so coming down here, this is your commit uh, message that you want to, that you can type here. I'm going to say, add it a banana. And I'm going to commit that new file to the repository. Now the repository has apple, banana, and orange, three files. But locally on our computer, we still only have apple and orange. Now, if you want to get the latest changes from the GitHub repository, it's super, super simple. All we have to do is git pull. And as this is happening, watch uh, the banana.py file show up here. There it is. And you can see what happened. We are now on the latest uh, commit hash right here. That's kind of what this means. These all refer to the commit hashes in git log. And we have that extra commit message in here from the, uh, the changes that I made up on GitHub. So that was pretty easy. That was pretty painless, right? Um, again, you can do this as many times as you want, make changes, make as many commits as you want locally, and then push them all up in a batch, or you can uh, add commits and then push them up as you do that. It depends on whatever workflow you like to do. Whenever you're ready to publish your changes, share your changes with other people, that's when you're gonna do a git push. So let's do a git push. But first, let's make a change. So we have these three files here. I'm gonna make a change to banana.py. Uh, I'm gonna say I eat banana and another banana. I eat a banana and another banana. Okay, so I'm gonna save that file. We'll go through the same workflow as we did in the previous video. Git status, that file has changed. We can look at the difference, git diff, and then we can do git add. Uh, I'll show you a shortcut here. Git add dash u adds all the changes or adds files that um, have been updated since the last time you commit it. So if you do git status now, you can see that uh, this is in our index in our staging area. And now we can do git commit with dash m for message. The commit message will be mm, add it another banana. Okay, so like I was saying, we can push those changes up to GitHub with git push. Now, before we did push dash u origin or i g i n main, to specify the name of the remote repository and then the branch that we want to push. But because we have already been through that process once, we can use the shorthand where it's going to assume those two names and just do a git push. Okay, so git push will go ahead and push those changes up. Okay, those changes have been pushed up to git. So let's confirm that there are now four commits in the git history, and we should be able to see the same thing on GitHub. So right now, this cache page, there's three commits. Let's refresh it. Then now there are four commits. And if we look at banana, I get, I bet you will see the two bananas. There they are. Okay, so um, the one thing that we haven't looked at yet is clone. So let's basically scrap everything that we did so far. Let's go back a directory 
and let's remove the fruit repository, the whole folder, everything from our local computer. So there, that that file, that folder's gone with all the files, um, and we're basically we don't have access to that code anymore. But if we want to get access to it, it's really simple to clone a Git repository. It's one of the simplest things you can do. You just find the Git repository that you're interested in. It could be this one. It could be another one. Go up here to the code section, and you can either copy now. I want to be very specific here. When you're first pushing a Git repository uh, to GitHub, you want to use the SSH URL. Um, otherwise, the HTTPS URL is fine for cloning. Okay, so let's copy that and do, and we'll do a Git clone, and then the URL of the repository. Hit Enter, and what that's going to do? It's probably going to show up. Yep, on my other screen here it cloned uh, all that code into a folder called git 101 now let's delete that what if we wanted to call that fruit instead we can do git clone the name of the URL and then what we want to clone it into so we want to clone it into a directory called fruit so let's do that and it actually showed up on this screen this time there is our fruit repository and I just want to show you one other thing before we finish up here. You can actually use the SSH um, URL to clone that repository. So let's do that one last time here. We'll do git clone git at github.com and then we'll put it in the fruit directory one more time. Okay, and this time it showed up on my other screen, but here it is. All of those files and if we go into that directory, do a git log we'll see the full commit history. There's a lot more you can do with GitHub, including hosting a free website using GitHub pages. If you're interested in doing something like that, check out this video next. Thank you guys, subscribe, and I'll see you over there.